What makes that old school jazz sound? Well, you might be one of those who've seen this amazing soul by Patrick Bartley on After You've Gone, where he uses a lot of these old school tricks. So what is it exactly that makes this old school jazz sound? Let's zoom out a bit and crystallize the concepts used by Patrick in the solo so you can use those same IDs. I'll use my transcription in concert key, but that doesn't matter as we'll just go into the concepts and like any good jazz boy, you'll have to learn it afterwards in 24 keys anyways. Oh God, jazz. <laughs> So one of the first ingredients to get to that old school sound is going to the basses and use the arpeggios of the chords, sometimes even just the triads. <laughs> As you can see in the beginning of his solo, he uses a few different, but these are pretty much all triads. One of B flat, C minor, A major, E flat, and at the end a B flat augmented, which has that sharp five, which is also pretty much a old school sound where that sharp five, in this case the F sharp, resolves to the G or the third of the next chord. <laughs> Here's another example of that B-flat augment. <laughs> to elaborate on those triads, he also approaches those triads chromatically or diatonically a lot. <laughs> the diatonic approach might sound maybe even more old school. Okay, so we discussed the triads a bit, but there is even one note more in those triads that is a focal point. This is the major third of the triad, especially playing a bit with the major third by alternating with the note a half step lower. Besides using a lot of the arpeggios, we can also see some different themes coming back chorus after chorus. There are a few recurring gaito lines on, for example, this B flat 7 to E flat major 7. He uses the A flat, the 7th of that B flat dominant 7, to resolve to the G, the 3rd of the E flat major 7. Check that out. <laughs> Another one like this is the C7 going to the F7 where he uses the E, the major third of the C7 to resolve to the E flat, the flat 7 of the F7. Sometimes also combined with an extra approach note in between those, but basically the same ID. <laughs> Okay, I just noticed this during editing, but you can also see how much, um, yeah, the rhythmic framework is the same here as well, besides that guide online. Basically the same ID. <laughs> And he always also ends on the C on, on the same chord um, to end this phrase on exactly the same bar. So that's all part of the glue as well. Which is an element I'll still discuss in this video later, but it was super apparent in this one too. And then there's certainly also a hip side. Probably because he outlines the chords so much during the majority of his solo, the few times he uses a chord substitution, it totally hits home. Check out the tritone substitution in the break where he exchanges the B flat 7 for its tritone away, the E7 to resolve perfectly to E flat major 7. <laughs> the 
We've talked now mainly about the harmonic elements of the solo, but a key factor to that old school sound, like say Lester Young, is also a recurring rhythmic framework. Lester Young would use this often like a rhythmic framework of two bars of a certain rhythm that he repeated and he inserted different melodic phrases, but the rhythm kept on being the same. And here we can see Patrick using the same ID. And a last factor, which probably everybody of you already have noticed, but there is that fast vibrato that makes it very old school. This is a key factor in all those old swing bands, like for example, Glenn Miller, where every note that would be just a longer quarter note would get a very fast vibrato. So these were just a few of my observations on what I think made a lot of the old school sound as it's perceived in this solo. Are there things you think I left out? You can really drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear that. Are there some concepts that do make sense to you? Like most people hear intuitively that it's old school but don't know really why or did you right away knew exactly all those factors and this is a obsolete video but anyway you made it till here so that's great if you haven't check out the full solo it's amazing the transcription is both for e flat instruments and c instruments on the channel and i'm Joren Reinders from sharp 11 music until next time